What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you a fun video about Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader, the upcoming game from Owlcat Games, but more specifically we are talking about what that game is based on, its source material. However, a few things to get out of the way right here at the start. So, if you're unaware, the upcoming game will be based on the 2009 TTRPG Rogue Trader in the Warhammer 40k universe. However, it's important to understand that what we're going to get in the game is an adaptation of these systems. So I thought it would be fun to go over the source material, the core rulebook for that TTRPG, and talk about a few things and maybe offer some thoughts about how they might be adapted. But understand, what we're getting is going to be an adaptation and not a one-for-one -one recreation. So with all of that said, let's actually dive in and talk about some of these systems and things that are laid out in the core rulebook for Rogue Trader. Now for starters, the system as a whole uses two D10s, or a D100 as it is sometimes called. This is essentially where you have two D10s and you perform basically all of your rolls with those, as most rolls and things are going to be arranged between 0 to 100 in some fashion, everything down to your stats and your skill test as they're called. So I wanted to mention that at the top of the video, but for the uninitiated, what is a Rogue Trader? What does that even mean? So while not going too deep here, the rogue traders are more or less space merchants that are given a warrant of trade by the emperor of the Imperium of Man. As such, this means that rogue traders are given more or less complete freedom to do their work, which is to expand the territories of the emperor by going out and trading and making deals and exploring. As such, this gives rogue traders a substantial amount more freedom than anyone in the Imperium of Man could even dream of. As in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. Meaning, of course, that life is pretty terrible for most people. However, rogue traders have a very privileged existence in this way because they're allowed to go out and be who they want to be and do things, basically. However, generally speaking, they manage some sort of galactic empire in terms of their wealth. Their whole thing is probably profit and running a successful trade empire, hence the trader part. Another thing to keep in mind is that this is a dynastic position, meaning that the warrant of trade is passed down through generations. Rogue traders often form a dynasty. And that brings us to the next two parts of this video, the origin paths and your career path. Origin paths are your background. This is where your character is from, what they were in life before they came into their role, either as a rogue trader or another class, which we'll talk about in a second. But essentially, this just serves as a background and picking what world you're from or other parts of your previous life then gives you access to certain skills and talents, etc. And it's an important part of building your character as being from some specific worlds leans into specific classes better. Now, we know from some of what Alcat has put out on Twitter that they are at the very least incorporating what world you're from, or at least they seem to have implied that. But essentially, your origin path is this version's background system. However, it does incorporate a lot more than just what world you're from. To give some specific examples, other parts of this might be your birthright or your personal motivations or your traits. Now, in terms of a video game, I imagine they might cut some of this down a little bit, but you can easily see how they can incorporate some of this stuff. And that brings us to the career path. Now, this is a little more interesting because in the source material, rogue trader specifically is a class you can pick. Typically speaking, one person at the table would be the rogue trader class, and then the other people would pick classes that supported that character. Now, in the game, obviously, the main character is going to be a rogue trader, and as such, again, drawing from some implications of things they've posted in terms of their art and the way they've talked about the game on Twitter, etc., it would appear that, again, your main character is the rogue trader, and then you'll be able to pick a class that your rogue trader will then occupy. But it's interesting to me that in the core rulebook, rogue trader was its own class. Now, once you've actually picked your class and your background and all that, we have things like attributes, or in this particular setting, as they're known, characteristics. This comes down to weapon skill, ballistic skill, strength, toughness, agility, intelligence, perception, willpower, and fellowship. Some of these are pretty self-explanatory, but the fellowship one is essentially charisma. It's your ability to influence other people. Weapon skill is melee weapons, or hand-to-hand, -hand, basically anything close combat. And then ballistic skill is your accuracy with ranged weapons. Now, again, how much of this gets translated into the game, I guess we'll see. However, like everything else, 
in this particular system, this is a number from 1 to 100. And the way these characteristics are determined is by rolling two d10s and then adding 25 to that. They also have a point by system like every other TTRPG, but essentially you'll roll two die 10, which will be between two and 20, and then you'll add 25 to whatever that is. So mid 20s to mid 40s is pretty much what you're looking at in terms of starting stats. And these numbers are especially important when we start talking about skills. Now skills come in advanced and basic. Basic skills can be used by pretty much everybody, even if you don't necessarily have that much training, whereas advanced skills require your character to know something about it or be trained in it. For instance, you can't really track a target if you have never been taught how to track something, whereas anyone can try to hide in a shadow. They just might not be very good at it. And then from there, each of those skills is broken down into little subtypes based on the type of action they're performing, which again might not actually translate to the game, but worth mentioning, I suppose. Now, each skill is governed by a character meaning one of your attributes that we just talked about. So, for instance, if you're trying to climb something, that's your strength characteristic. If you're trying to charm someone, that's your fellowship characteristic, that type of stuff. It's all governed by a stat. And that's important to know because of how this game handles its skill checks or roles, basically, or tests as it calls them. As any time you want to do something in the Rogue Trader TTRPG, you perform a test, either unopposed or opposed. Unopposed is things like trying to pick a lock. You're going to roll your 2d10 or your d100, and then that roll will either pass or fail based on your character's characteristic. If you roll and the roll is lower than your characteristic, you pass. If you roll and the roll is higher than your characteristic, you fail. And then there are opposed skill checks or skill tests. This is used when you're doing things like directly comparing your skills with someone else's, or if you're trying to charm someone, they might have a roll to kind of counter that. Now, if you pass and they fail, obviously it works. However, if you both succeed, then it boils down to things like the degree of success or the difference between your characteristic and the actual role. So who was closer to being a failure, that kind of thing. And then in combat, this turns into your attack versus their dodge or parry. So for instance, if your character shoots at someone and you roll a successful hit, that character then has the option to roll a dodge counter. And if they make their dodge, then technically the hit didn't actually go through. But if they fail their dodge, they take damage as normal. However, if you are untrained in something in this way, you can only apply half of your bonus to it. So if the enemy you're trying to hit is not trained in dodge, they don't get their full bonus to dodge. So in this way, it is actually slightly more deterministic than a typical game like D&D or Pathfinder would be. It's just slightly less random in that way and a bit easier to understand. As a part of Pathfinder and D&D, or D&D 3.5, I should say, a lot of the explanation of things goes into to explaining the math and why you're rolling the things that you're rolling, whereas this system is a little more straightforward and I think easier to follow. So to some capacity, I would expect this to probably be carried forward into the game, as in a lot of ways it retains the depth, especially when you start adding things like skills and whether or not they're trained versus untrained. Do you have skill mastery, which is a thing, or the talents that your character has picked, as something I haven't discussed up to this point, is that as your character levels, you'll be able to pick things like talents and increase your characteristics. So there's still a decent amount of depth to the system, but overall it's a little easier to manage than something like, say, Pathfinder, which is very rules heavy. But again, how much of that actually gets translated to the game? Who knows? Now, the last thing I want to talk about in this video, though there is a lot more to the core rulebook, but I'm trying to boil it down to the important stuff here. But the last thing I want to talk about is the profit factor. So when you're playing the TTRPG, the profit factor is very important, as your wealth is not measured in necessarily currency, which is the throne gelt, by the way, but rather your profit factor, which is an overall assessment of your empire. And in the TTRPG, this could actually be used to do things like acquire various parts for their ship or specific equipment. And it was a way to kind of quantify their ability to procure something valuable based on how wealthy their empire was as a whole, rather than their individual wealth, like how much currency they have on them. So I think this is a particular interesting stat that it'll be cool to see them try to incorporate in some manner. As again, in Rogue Trader, building this empire is very important, so I'd be surprised if we don't see that in some fashion. And then, of course, I mentioned starships. So rogue traders are, of course, the commander of a ship. 
And the book itself does actually talk about starship combat and acquiring parts for your ship. Curious to see how that's going to be translated. I don't know if they're going to actually do like space combat and stuff, which is detailed in the core rulebook. But the way it's done in the core rulebook is a little eh. So I think they would have to kind of overhaul it to fit it into a game. So I'm not even going to try to mention how that could possibly be translated. But I would tell you it is in the core rulebook. So I'm not sure if it'll wind up in the game or not as is. But nonetheless, space combat is in there. Now, that's where we're going to leave it for today, but I would tell you there's a lot of things in the core rulebook that I did not even go over, such as how your character advances in ranks or the talents, that kind of stuff. I tried to keep the more exhaustive, rules-heavy type stuff kind of out of the conversation because, again, how it translates to the game has yet to be seen. But I thought some people might be curious about this kind of rough overview of the core rulebook book of the system this game will be based on without getting into the nitty-gritty details a little too much. But overall, it's something I enjoyed reading, so I wanted to share it with you guys. And to that end, if you're looking forward to the game, by all means, subscribe and stick around. I will have more Rogue Trader stuff going up as we learn more information and more things are revealed, just like I did with Owlcat's previous games. And to that end, when we actually get our hands on the game and things like beta, etc., I'll probably try to create a lore primer for those who are new to Warhammer 40k, who are just kind of curious about what they need to know to jump into Rogue Trader to make it all make a little more sense. So that's something I have planned as well. But that's where we're going to leave it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.